In this sketch, we'll be covering a few congenital bone disorders involving either defective bone formation or bone maintenance. And it'll all be taking place at the bone wall. You know, most people assume that the bone is a static, lifeless, boring structure. But life out here at the wall can be kind of exciting at times. Some days are spent building the wall, starting with the cartilage matrix, followed by ossification. Gotta maintain the wall too. You know, osteoblasts and osteoclasts working in concert in a state of constant turnover. There's a... Uh, we did a secret Santa one year, I guess. Okay, fine. Life out here sucks, okay? Is that what you wanted to hear? I'm bored out of my... <gasps> It's one of those things. I mean, I've heard stories and all, mere legend, so I thought. Though, less intimidating, I guess. Um, more disgusting, actually. Ah, that skin, though. I mean, is that a battle cry, or is he just really uncomfortable all the time? Kinda feel bad for the guy. Over here on the north side of the wall, we're going to start our discussion with collagen, specifically type 1, the most common form in the body. At Sketchy, we always include some kind of cartilaginous shark symbol to represent collagen. And in this scene, it's incorporated into the sword held by the osteowalker. Notice, too, that the hilt looks like the number one. Type 1 collagen is found in scar tissue, bones, tendons, ligaments, skin, and sclera, all over the place. Collagen is normally produced from propeptides synthesized predominantly in fibroblasts. Type 1 collagen forms as a triple helix when two alpha-1 chains combine with one alpha-2 chain inside the cell. Kinda like this makeshift bomb fuse here. This bundle of propeptides, also known as procollagen, is then exported from the cell and enzymatically cleaved by proteases into mature protein. When bone is produced, it's the type 1 collagen that gives it flexibility, while the inorganic hydroxyapatite crystals provide strength. All right, with that bit of biochemistry out of the way, on to our first disorder, osteogenesis imperfecta, a congenital defect in type 1 collagen, also known as brittle bone disease represented here by the imperfect and brittle bones of the osteowalker. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. Just let it out. The most common forms of osteogenesis imperfecta are inherited in an autosomal dominant manner, represented by the domino pattern incorporated into the osteowalker's armor. Collagen gives bones their flexibility. So in osteogenesis imperfecta, the bones are brittle and weak, and they can easily fracture with minimal force. Or dragon glass and valerian steel for some reason. Mess up just one strand and the entire triple helix is thrown into disarray. Osteogenesis imperfecta is associated with mutations in the genes for either the alpha-1 or alpha-2 proproteins, called COL1A1 and COL1A2 respectively. Based on the specific mutation in these genes, osteogenesis imperfectica can have many distinct presentations. In this sketch, we're going to focus on the most common form, type 1, and the most severe form, type 2. Type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta is associated with gene mutations that disrupt the formation of the normal type 1 collagen triple helix. So, next to the struggling mother, we've made the triple helix fuse all unwound and improperly folded. Type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta is not conducive to life. Due to the incredible number of fractures these patients suffer, as well as intracranial hemorrhage, affected babies die in utero or immediately after delivery. Meanwhile, in type 1 disease, the features are less severe because these patients still make normal type 1 collagen, just less of it. So next to the osteowalker, the triple helix fuse retains its normal structure. Aside from fractures, let's review some classic clinical features associated with osteogenesis imperfecta. With less collagen in the sclera, it becomes more translucent, revealing the color of the blue-gray choroidal veins underneath. This manifests as those classic blue sclera. Patients with moderate osteogenesis imperfecta can develop conductive hearing loss as a result of abnormal function, fracture, or dislocation of the ossicles within the middle ear. As a major component of dentin, type 1 collagen is also integral to the formation of normal teeth. Therefore, patients can have small opalescent teeth that wear out quickly also known as dentinogenesis imperfecta. And that's it for osteogenesis imperfecta. One last thing to mention before moving on. On test day, when you're presented with a child suffering from multiple fractures, think child abuse first. It's unfortunately much more common than a rare genetic disease. More than likely, if they're trying to get you to think of osteogenesis imperfecta, they'll also throw in some blue sclera, hearing loss, and small teeth.